We say that a set is countable if there's a bijection between that set we're looking at and the natural numbers. In other words, if we want to show that 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, all of the even numbers are countable, then what we have to show is that for this set, 0, 4, 2, 6, 8, dot, 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 we can map it onto the set of natural numbers, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. This comes from the fact that the natural numbers are countable. So if we can create some function that takes all of the elements in our first set to the set of natural numbers, then our first set should be countable too. So what we can do is we can realize that each of these numbers on the left, if we divide them by two, what we get is some number in our set of natural numbers. So Basically, what we can do is we can take n, or 2n in this case, and we can map it onto n, which would be the same as saying that n gets mapped onto n over 2. So we can create a function n such that that equals n over 2. So if we plug in any of our numbers from our set 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, we are going to get the set containing 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Therefore, this is going to be countable. So we have to take sets and some functions and just be a little bit clever with them. For the second one, we want to show that 1, 1 4th, 1 9th, 1 16th is countable. So what we want to do is take this original set and then map it on to the natural number 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. We don't necessarily need to include 0 in this one. We're just removing one number. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to remove 0 here. That way we have a nice formula. Now what we notice about our original set in this case is that this is of the form 1 over 1 squared. I'll just put the numbers in there. 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 3 squared, and so on. So in other words, we'd be taking any of our forms 1 over n squared and trying to get them matched up with n. So what we can do is we can take a function and we can say, OK, this function is going to go from the natural numbers to our set 1, 1 fourth, and so on. So we'll take a number from our natural numbers and we're going to just simply map it on to 1 over n squared. So f of n is equal to 1 over n squared. And because we get a nice mapping from our set to the natural numbers and vice versa, because it's a bijection, we can claim that this is therefore countable. So what happens if we want to show that something is uncountable? That means that no such bijection exists. So for this exercise, we're going to show that the set of all real numbers between 0 and 1 is uncountable. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that it's countable and all of the numbers between 0 and 1 exist. So in other words, we're going to get like 0.0.0. .0 .0 0, 0, 0, 0.0001, 0 0.02456, and basically we're just going to get all of the numbers up until, like, let's say 0 0.99 repeated. I know that's equal to 1, but for the sake of uh, uh, showing it, let's just assume it's not. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be clever. What we're going to do is we're going to take our set of all of these real numbers. So let's call this the set R between 0 and 1. And we're going to order these. So we're going to say the first number is A1, the second one's A2, third one's A3, and that just continues on until we get to say AN, which would be our, maybe not our last number. So let's just leave it like this, going on from A3. And what we're going to do is we're going to write these numbers out. 
So let's say for the sake of example that A is 0.7362 and some more, A2, A3, and A4 is going to be, uh, let's say 0 0.1295 keeps going, 0 0.6311 keeps going, and 0 0.5124 keeps going. Okay, so if our set is countable, all of our numbers should be accounted for. But what we're going to show is that we can make a new number that wasn't in our original set. Because we can make a new number, we'll show that it is uncountable. So what we'll do is we're going to pick our new number, we're gonna call it R, and how we're going to do this is we're going to change the number in one position in each of our A1s. So in other words, let's say that R is 0. Point, uh, say D1, D2, D3, D4, and so on. And what these are in this place are just our decimal points. So D1 is the tenths place, D2 is the hundredths place, and so on. And how we're going to define this is we're going to say that di, so the ith position, is going to be one of two things. It's going to be two if a i i is not equal to two. So let me explain this. If we have a i i, then what this means is that a one one would be the first number, first decimal. If we have a22, that would be second number, and that would be second decimal. So in other words, we're basically going to change that first bit in a1 to be 0.2 if we don't have a 2 in that tenths place. And we're going to change it to, I'll try to revert back to the previous color, the 3 if AII is equal to two. So in other words, if the third position of the third number is two, we'll turn it into three. Now what we're gonna get in this case is a brand new number. We're gonna get R is equal to zero, and in this case, because the first place is seven, we change it to two. In the second position, it's two, so we change it to three. In A3, it'd be one, so we change it to two. In four, it would be four, so we change it to two, and this continues on and on and on. Now, this has to be new because we're going through every single element and we're changing it. So you might say we already have that number in our set because we're accounting for everything, but then Let's say that R or something very similar to R would be in our set. As soon as we get to whatever position R is in our original set, we are going to change one of those values. So because we can create this new number that hasn't been mapped to the natural numbers in the first place, we can then claim that this set is uncountable. So that's a nice little proof that some people tend to struggle with, um, that it's usually a classic example of what you see. So this is the set of all real numbers between zero and one being uncountable. So there's an uncountably infinite number of numbers between zero and one, but this would extend to other things too. So this would extend to the fact that we'd have all real numbers between zero and uh, 100 is uncountable. So that would be, uh, just a natural flow from this. If we can show that between 0 and 1 is uncountable, then anything bigger is going to be uncountable. So hopefully this helped. Uh, if it did help, you know what to do. You can leave a comment down below, like and share all that fun stuff. There's also a set theory course on my website at trevtutor.com, and there's also a workbook PDF on YouTube or on my website trevtutor.com that you can get for extra practice problems to practice these concepts. So if that's something that interests you and you want to support it in a different way, you can always go check one of those out. So uh, I hope this cleared things up, 
and I'm happy to see you in the next video.